Jim Moore Jr. set to join us. I'm looking at some numbers here with uh, UCLA. Uh, let's see. Now, I, I read this where it may be advantage uh, advantageous, I should say, for the Bruins to lose on Saturday if uh, Stanford wins the two teams meet again the following Friday in Palo Alto for the conference championship. If UCLA wins, Oregon defeats Oregon State, it sets up a pre- rematch of last year's conference title game in Eugene. You know what? With what Jim Moore has done with that program, I don't think he's thinking, well, you know what? Let's do our best to uh, get a rematch with Stanford instead of going to Oregon. Jim Moore Jr. joins us now. Congrats, Coach, on the season and the win over USC. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. You're right. That's not uh, that's not even in our mindset. <laughs> but what do you say to your kids that you have that emotional win and how important it is, but now you have to say to them, forget that. Now we have to concentrate on what we still have left here. Well, that's just competitive athletics. I mean, that happens all the time. You go through the course of the season, you have – emotional wins and you've got to find a way to get past it you have tough losses you got to find a way to get over it and that's just the that's just the way it is and you know we've got a a top 10 team in the country coming in on saturday and our goal has never been to just play in the pac-12 championship or just uh make a bowl game and we want to win every week that's what that's what competitors do they don't care who they're playing where they're playing what the conditions are or what the ramifications are if you're a competitor you want to win and this team's filled with competitors what was the game plan against usc uh we I don't know, that's a pretty broad question okay but we'll narrow it down to say you know we wanted uh we were going to make them one-dimensional we were putting pressure on barkley we had confidence in our defense our offense a lot better than they thought you know was there something where you said we can take advantage of them uh, no, I mean, you know, we just kind of do what we do. And, uh, you know, our game plan, I guess, defensively was we knew that we had to we had to contain Lee and Woods as much as possible. All those guys are both tremendous, tremendous players. And we did a decent job in the first half. Second half, they got going a little bit. We wanted to try to put some pressure on Barkley, uh, you know, and we did a good job of that and then got to him late in the game, obviously. Offensively, we felt like if we could just be physical with them up front, that we could uh, have some success, and we were able to run the ball on them effectively. And then, you know, we operated a pretty good tempo on offense, and we felt like if we could just, you know, play at our tempo, that maybe, you know, they play relentless up front, their their defensive line. I mean, they really play hard. they got a kid named Morgan Breslin that's just a – I mean, he's a going Jesse. He just goes and goes and goes. We felt like if we could temple him, that maybe we could wear Morgan down a little bit. I don't know if we ever did, but, you know, we had some success late. But you're looking at this game, and I didn't know if Stanford's blueprint against USC helped you with USC. No, no. We, we're different than Stanford. We're a totally different team. So we just, like I said, we just do what we do. Yeah, but we they don't. tried to be physical and run the football. Well, I mean, we try. We're one of the top running run rush offenses in the in the country. So we're gonna, you know, we're gonna continue to do that. We've got Jonathan Franklin, who's, you know, up for the Doak Walker. He's one of three finalists. So we're gonna feed him the ball. So, that's, well, like I said, we just do what we do. He's a Jim Moore Jr., UCLA head coach. When Rick Neuheisel was on uh, his exit interview after he was done at UCLA, he said, "Until they put more focus, concentrate on making this program a major program." UCLA is going to have problems. Did they do – how important that was, was that for you when you got there at UCLA? We're moving in the right direction. We're definitely doing some things that are helping our football program. Plans are underway to build a football-only building, which is something we desperately need. And Thankfully, our athletic director, Dan Guerrero, has just done a tremendous job of uh, kind of motivating the forces and mobilizing the forces to get that get that going. Um but this is a place you can win. I mean, it's a school that's very attractive to people. It's a, it's one of the most recognizable universities in the world. You get a world-class education. It's in the middle of a beautiful, beautiful area. The campus is spectacular. You know, if you've got a degree from UCLA, uh, you're in pretty good shape for the rest of your life as long as you, you know, understand how to, how to network. And uh, just I think there's great tradition here, not just football-wise, but academically, basketball. There's more national championships at UCLA than any college in the country. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm sitting out here right now. It's There's not a cloud in the sky about to go to practice. It's one of the most beautiful places you'll ever, you'll ever be. So who wouldn't want to come here, you know? So you can have success, and then we're going to try to maintain that success. 
How, what were your expectations this year? Uh, I didn't necessarily have any other than to just get better every day and be playing our best football at the end of the year. We didn't put any expectations in terms of what our record was going to be or anything like that. It was just every day we come out to practice, we try to get a little bit better. Every time we walk into a meeting, we try to learn a little bit more. We want to be playing good football at the end of the year. Did we overrate USC, and I say we, the media? I don't know. I I don't pay any attention to that. I I mean, I don't know. But did they look like a team that should have been ranked number one in the country to start the year? Yeah, but you know how that goes. I mean, every year things change. I mean, there's injuries. There's momentum changes. Um, I think they're a very good football team. You know, I think they've got a tremendous amount of talent. I mean, they're an amazingly talented team. And, uh, you know, some things just, sometimes things just don't break the right way for you. And uh, I have a lot of respect for Lane and what they're doing there. And I, I don't know if they're overrated and underrated. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> if you're looking at the USC guy you think would have the most success in the pros, who would it be? The USC guy? Yeah. I, Dan, I'm, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I couldn't give a rat's ass about USC right now. Well, I'm just curious about Marquise Lee. I appreciate he's that, coach. He's a great coach. player. Okay. Yeah, he's a great player. I'm thinking about Stanford. USC's, <laughs> USC's a million miles behind us. So I, I don't care about USC. I don't think about USC. I'm thinking about Stanford. Well, congrats on the win, and I'll let you think about Stanford in the uh, cloudless sky there. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. All right. Jim Moore, Jr., don't ask him about USC. He doesn't give a rat at, rat's ass. I thought he might want to talk about Marquise Lee a little bit since I love the guy. I don't know. Thought it might have been one of those compliment him and I compliment you, that kind of thing.